Today's Mac OS on very old Mac shenanigans are brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. This is my M1 Max MacBook Pro with 64 gigs of RAM. And this is a 15 year old non unibody MacBook Pro with three. And although Apple dropped support for this thing way back with El Capitan, they're both running the latest version of macOS 14 Sonoma. So what kind of wacky nonsense is going on here? Stay tuned. And if you enjoy torturing old computers with way too new of an operating system, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. So what is this dark magic allowing me to natively run the latest macOS 14 Sonoma on both the modern Apple Silicon MacBook Pro and its great great grandpa? Well, it's actually not very dark at all. In fact, it's open. Open Core Legacy, which has just released their 1.0 and now 1.01 version. It's software that patches the macOS installer to let it run on a whole host of otherwise unsupported by Apple Macs including this one, which is the oldest MacBook Pro on the OCL compatibility list. It's a non-unibody MacBook Pro 4.1. It's a dual core Intel Penryn with three gigs of RAM. Pretty sure Tim Cook would not approve. And OpenCore Legacy is incredibly simple to use. Patching the installer sounds complicated, but it's actually just point and click. So what I thought we'd do today is run through a quick install of Sonoma on an unsupported Mac with OpenCore Legacy so you can see how simple it is. And then we'll do some ridiculous tests to compare these two systems with a quite a hilarious age gap running the same operating system using very unscientific and ridiculous tests right after this word about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Create a fast, beautiful, and rich web experience for your business or brand using Squarespace's powerful all-in-one platform. It's really easy to get started, like say I wanted to build a website dedicated to saving old bags like this one from becoming e-waste. I could build it in just minutes with Squarespace's new next generation fluid engine, which features powerful drag and drop technology and enables you to customize every detail of your customer's experience on desktop and mobile. That's on top of optimizing for SEO, managing a mailing list, watching your analytics, and much more. So check out squarespace.com slash action retro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code action retro to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, so I don't intend this to be a how to guide for how to install this. Instead, what I'm going to do is just a quick run through to show you how simple it is. And I'm going to link below to some other videos by my friend, Mr. Macintosh that go a lot more in depth. And we're not going to do the install on this MacBook Pro, which is already running very nicely because actually this took a bit of finagling to get working. Instead, we're going to use a slightly newer mid 2011 11 inch MacBook Air my favorite Mac laptop. So I'm preparing the installer on my modern MacBook Pro. All I have to do is insert a USB flash drive and then we can create macOS installer, which will actually download the installer from Apple for you for whichever version of the macOS you choose. In our case, of course, Sonoma. And then you simply select the settings here choose your Mac model from this drop down list. And that does all of the under the hood hacks for you. And what you wind up with is this, a USB flash drive custom to your specific system. And to actually run the install, well, step one, plug in the USB drive and then power on your system and hold down the option key. And then in the boot picker here, just choose the EFI boot option. The little O is the open core logo. And then choose install macOS Sonoma. And on most machines, including this one, it should just be a dead simple, straightforward and standard install. All right, and about 40 minutes later, here we are in the initial setup and <laughs> 
Man, these fans are really chugging. Dark mode, of course. And here we are in a fresh install of macOS 14 Sonoma on this 13 year old MacBook Air base model 11 inch. And now the last thing that we have to do is wait about a minute or so for this dialog to appear. And this is OpenCore Legacy detecting that it's still booting from the USB drive, so it's going to want to launch the patcher. Again, all automatic. And then you just have to install it to this machine's hard drive. So from now on, this machine will just boot normally into Mac OS 14 Sonoma. That is so wild. And it's even more wild that it's so easy. I can log in here. And yeah, it's not super fast, but it's also not unreasonably slow, which is shocking, really shocking, because look at this. About this Mac, 1.7 gigahertz dual core i5, Intel HD graphics, and four gigs of RAM. Okay, so now that we saw a trouble-free install, Let's talk a little bit about this non-unibody Mac. And uh, let me preface this by saying it's amazing that this is even possible. I mean, Apple hasn't thought about these non-unibody MacBook Pros since the mid 2000s. And yet here we are running macOS 14 Sonoma, mostly trouble free. It did take some finagling to get this to work though. OpenCore Legacy's documentation says that this runs USB 1.1 for the keyboard and the trackpad internally, and macOS 14 does not support USB 1.1. The patcher puts support back in, but until the patcher is complete, you have to start the setup with an external keyboard and mouse. The thing I wasn't quite prepared for is that during the install process, whenever it would automatically reboot the system, it wouldn't reboot into the correct partition. And I kind of just figured that out by guessing, but it was very easy to work around. I just, every time it rebooted automatically, I'd re-reboot it and then hold down option and choose the correct partition to continue the install. And when I posted about this on social media, people had a lot of questions about what actually worked on here and what wasn't supported in Sonoma. And I'm happy to report that almost everything works. Backlit keyboard works, screen brightness works, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi work. The only thing that doesn't seem to work is internal audio. You see, if I try to raise the volume, fortunately, since we have Bluetooth, we can use a Bluetooth speaker. And yeah, that does seem to work. So one of the questions people had is, what's it like browsing the internet on this thing with three gigs of RAM? Yeah, look at this. The most recent version of Safari running on this absolutely ancient MacBook Pro. All right, so let's check out some YouTube. And I haven't actually yet tried to play a video on this thing, so we're gonna discover that together. But just in loading the website itself, honestly, it's not that bad. It's not fast, but it's not unreasonably slow. So uh, let's try a search here. How about my buddy Ron's Computer Videos, a channel you should certainly check out. Look at that. That search was super fast. And two finger scrolling works. It's very smooth, actually. And Ron actually just posted this nice video about creating disk images for Blue Scuzzy with Infinite Mac. Let's check it out. Sound! Hey everybody, <laughs> it's Ron. Exact URL. This works um, great. It is a really cool website that uses, uh, uh, or rather, uh, it won't be cached, so that way I could do multiples. All right, let's crank it up a little bit. 720p60. Of this, if I really wanted to. That works just but fine. I'm just gonna click uh, 
erase this, and I'm going to call this like Mac SE because we're going to set this up for my uh, board machine over. All right, let's try another friend of mine, Macintosh Librarian. And we'll try this one in HD. And you see how fast this thing is browsing. Hi, welcome to Macintosh Librarian Labs. I wanted to introduce my YouTube audience okay. to my awesome library. We're at 720p. Or I like to call it my Jennifer Memorial Next Computer 1080p. Library. Let's try that. And Jennifer's still with us. Um, I just wanted to. Okay, so the frame rate went down a little bit, but it's actually still playing. She gave me for a really awesome price. So what we have here is a Next Computer, which is Next Computer's first game that was released in 1988. Yeah, this is 1080p, probably 1080 30 at full screen. And I can see a little bit of a slowdown in the frame rate, but honestly, this works pretty darn well, much better than I expected. I mean, my point of reference is trying to do this on like G4 PowerBooks, but in any event, this is awesome. Okay, now I promised you ridiculous benchmarking and I plan to deliver. So here we're gonna do some side-by-side -side tests of three gigs of RAM on a Core 2 Duo versus 64 gigs of RAM on an M1 Max. First test, logging in. All right, of course, the uh, M1 Max has finished. And the Core 2 Duo is dutifully chugging along. Uh, it's trying to launch Steam automatically. You probably should have thought of that. But we're in. I mean, considering the technology difference between these two machines, I'd say that's pretty impressive. Okay, test number two, launching Safari. And uh, yeah, the M1 Max is done before the first bounce is even complete. But look at that, there's Safari. Not actually that far behind. Again, three gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of RAM. Extreme difference in processor. I'm shocked. Let's try to load Mozilla.org. Oh, that was actually close. I'm really surprised at that. This loaded really, really fast. That must be a testament to how good Safari actually is when paired with the Mac OS. Okay, third party app launch. Let's try Steam. And both of them are bouncing around quite a lot. Okay, there is the M1. Loaded pretty fast. <laughs> Look, there's the Core 2 Duo. I can't believe that. That was really fast, actually. That was much faster than I was expecting. Okay, I have a very silly idea. Hang on a second. Well, I thought it would be hilarious to do Steam in-home streaming to stream Starfield to this thing from my totally not janky at all basement gaming computer. Unfortunately, it seems that this is where we draw the line. But with the excellent performance this machine has given us today, I think I can forgive it. Now, I'm not one to use the term flabbergasted lightly, but wow, I cannot believe how well this thing runs Sonoma. It's incredible. And OpenCore Legacy is just such a cool project. I mean, there are so many Macs of this vintage just floating around out there, waiting to be chucked into e-waste, and you can pick them up for next to nothing. And there's a ton of fun you can have with them. I mean, I would always install Linux on these things because they do make very cool Linux machines, but Mac OS Sonoma running usably on this machine. I mean, it just extends the life of this stuff so much and I'm so grateful to the developers and contributors of that project. So definitely check out the links down in the description below to some of this open core stuff if you have one of these machines laying around or you know, maybe something slightly newer. In any event, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below and thank you very much for watching.
And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Camila Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rosansky, Greg Rutke from Rutke Mods, Harris Brody, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Papaz, Jason Ezel, Justin Reed, Lyle Truid, Matthew Kroll, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Sutek, Tom Woodfin, and Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.